Welcome to the Innovation Squadcast. If you're looking for a podcast about instructional strategies enhanced by technology, you came to the right place. In our conversations, we'll talk to tech experts, share ideas and strategies to help you build your toolbox with tools that you can use in your class immediately. All right, welcome to the Squadcast podcast. I'm Jimmy Kate. Nicole Appoint. Jeremy Osborne. And today we're talking student creation projects. You know, when students are creating projects, deeper meaning takes place. Uh, the excitement, the passion for learning comes back. Um, student creation also allows for opportunities with creativity, collaboration, and critical thinking. And so we're going to explore some of those creation projects today, some tech tools that you can use in your classroom uh, to get your kids creating um, as quickly as possible. But before we get to that, we're going to start with this week's quick tech tip. Today's tech tip is the Screencast app built into your Chromebook. Let's check this out. When you're on your Chromebook, you can click on the little circle or startup menu. If you don't notice the Screencast app here, then you're always welcome to type it in. Since I have it here, I'm going to click on the Screencast. There are some pretty neat tools inside the Screencast app. You can transcribe your videos, use markers, and share your screencasts. Let's test this out. If I create a new screencast, and I want to pull up what I was talking about already, I'm able to go to the bottom, use the marker feature. If you right-click on the marker, it will show you different colors. Once you've picked the color, you can then use the mouse to circle or use your finger or stylist. One of the other neat features is that once you're finished with the screencast and you hit the end button, it's going to pop your screencast back up here. Notice it's trying to download. So once it finishes downloading, I'm able to open it and it's going to transcribe on the side. If I want to delete some of the pieces of the video, I can just right click on this and edit the text or skip this section. When I skip the section, it's going to delete that part of the video. I can also go in and actually edit the text. So if I wanted it to say something or maybe it mispronounced something, I'm able to go in and edit. Once I have completed the entire video, I can then share the video clicking here share with others. Notice that it keeps it private until you share with others. And it automatically saves to your Google Drive. Some awesome features that you're able to use within the Chromebook. All right, hope you enjoyed that quick tech tip. So talking student creation, you know, that's my favorite thing. That's what I love to do because kids get excited and that's, you know, the best thing in the classroom. Um, and we're going to start with kind of just the straight up presentations. How can, you know, teachers and students make their kind of uh, student created presentations better? Better or just some of the ideas for these students? Um, Both. The, the <laughs> students know how to use Google Slides, most yep. of them. Um, for the most part, but how can you kind of improve and make those a little more engaging? Um, I know Prezi, you've yep. used, some of your students have used Prezi. Yep. Um, and I think they kind of like it because it's almost like a moving. Yeah, it flies around and, yeah. and zooms in on things. Right, and, so right. so it, it's cluing you in on some of the important parts and I, I'm going to pay attention now because I don't want to miss some of the information. You're right. right. Prezi is great. You know, Prezi, the kids like it. It's creative. You can add pictures. You can do different things. And even inside of Google Slides, those presentations can become even better. There's a thing called Creator Studio that allows for them to spice up the presentations. Using Screencastified anytime allows for that as well to make Google Slides. Um, so, yeah, presentations work really nice in there. What else have we seen? I love I, a, a big one that we've used here is ThingLink. That's a, yep. a great tool where you can add hotspots. We've done things with 3D cameras and a lot of different tools that you can add into the thing link, um, you know, adding 
videos and things like that. Yeah, things it's like a lot super, of fun. Yeah, super cool. And they, there's a lot of things. They're always working on adi additions and things that you can do inside of it. Because a lot of these things, you know, we were talking about presentations. They can be they can make other things with them as well. So once kids start exploring, you'll see that there's a way to make um, different things. And, and inside of our show notes, we've got links to a lot of these different ones. So definitely check out our show notes in the description window um, as we got links to a lot of these. Priscilla was just checking out ThingLink and she noticed there's a VR Correct. experience Correct. now. Yep. So imagine how much fun and how engaging that would be for the students to create their own VR experience. Sure. And then something that all of our students have inside a class link is Adobe Express, oh, aka Adobe. used to be Adobe Spark. Yes. Um, but it also has a lot of different ways that kids can create inside of it as well. I love it because they can add voiceovers, they can add images, they can add text, change the font. Um, you know, they can really make it theirs. Sure. Um, so if they ever have to do an explanation, well, there you go. You have the recording feature in there as well. Absolutely. So. And then Vokey is another fun one that kids like to get into. Vokey is something that you can add voiceover to or you can just add text to. But it has these fun little characters and and people that you can that were basically speaking for you. Um, I added when I did one of my video lectures, Lincoln, I took Lincoln and actually did my video lecture with Lincoln doing the talking and inserted right. it inside of each one. So um, this is something that can just add that little extra I've, something to it. So and I've seen the excitement A fourth grade group did it and they use these um, characters from Western times. So they were talking about what they needed to explain in um, their history class, but then their character was kind of dressed as the part and yep. that was cool. So another type of project idea that is very popular, videos, films, things, movie trailers, things like that. Um, and always start with Screencastify with that. I mean, we use that for our podcast. We, you could Screencastify with presentations and then also they work inside of your video and film as well. So um, what else have you seen as far as, you know, video and film creation? Uh, I just got done working with a group of students that used a program called ClipChamp. Yep. And that was really great because it gives them the ability to go in. They can take, you know, different clips from videos that they've taken around the school, put all those things together. And they have a lot of editing features that they can add into those music and transitions and things like that. Um, and a group, group of fourth and fifth graders are able to create, you know, a morning show, um, from all those different clips and pictures and things that they took to make yeah. that video. What's nice about ClipChamp is that you got the green screen option for right. your non iOS, like do Inc is on the list. It's a, it's great inside for iPads, but if you don't have iPads, just using your Chromebook, um, it's a great green screen editor, um, for your Chromebooks. That's what's really great about ClipChamp. I'm going to have to check that one yeah, out. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I've also had students that are, you know, and using and seeing them use Powtoon. Powtoon's a really fun one. Uh, it has a lot of ways to fly animations and different things inside of it. Um, it. It's probably a little more your secondary because there is, you know, some, you know, some critical thinking that's involved with Powtoons and making it work, it's but like it's a they fun. Have some advanced features yes. in there. Yep. Um, but you, you really feel like you're in the part when you're doing a yeah. Powtoon. Yep. Um, so many features and characters and scenes that they have available. Sure. That, that kind of always reminded me of like an animated comic strip yep. type, yeah. of, type of thing. Sure. And another one version similar to that is like Animaker. Animaker makes, you can make little cartoons and little characters. It's a fun little, um, you know, project for students. And, and, you know, when, if somebody's excited about any kind of that, like film creation or cartoon creation, this is a way for them to kind of explore that passion and still being able to demonstrate something that they know about in the classroom, which is really what, you know, the student creation is all about. That's the whole idea. Absolutely. Just a different way to show what you know. Sure. Um, and then another project idea that's also very popular are books, comics, newspapers that, you know, when they're creating. And I know that you've had a lot of success with Book Creator. Book and, Creator, and, yeah. starting from the little ones. Yeah. First graders can use Book Creator all yeah. through Did high school. Kindergarten, even pre-K? Yes. Yeah, one time mm -hmm. present. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had um, a 4K teacher, Tyler Bunting. She's, um, I think, first or second grade now. But um, she had her kids create a class book because you can add in all the audio and the images. Um, and and you can make it like a comic book theme with yep. some of the yep. backgrounds yep. they have and some of the pow, kabam, <laughs> woo um, sayings they have to go yep. with it. Or you can use your own text and font. But it is fabulous yeah, for I love, getting yeah. that engagement Students and creation. Students really get into Book Creator. And, what, and the first time that I used it and, you know, my kids were using it. And then, I'll, you know, I looked at my library and the kid had made something for his English class. And so he's like, you know, he's like, it's really, you know, it's friendly. It's it's easy to use. Um, and so they, they were able to, you know, bring that into other subjects as well. So. Right. I think the fun thing about all of these things that we're talking about is 
when you're doing these creation projects, if everybody's making a slideshow, Google Slides, you know, and you're presenting, you're sitting there watching the same thing over and over again. Or grading the same thing over right. and over again. Grading <laughs> the same thing over and over again. Like being giving kids options to be able to do any of these things yes. is great. You might not be familiar with every single thing on our list that we're talking about. And that's okay. But, you know, giving kids options like, hey, you can choose whichever way you want to present your information. Right. There's so many different ways to do it. Yeah, there, and that's okay not to know. You don't have to be the expert in these tech. A lot of times the kids are going to be more ex more of an expert than we are. Let them take off. Let them figure it out. Let right. them play with it. Um, and you'll find that you know they'll be able to create things that are far exceed your expectations. Um, and then they can be the leaders showing everybody else sure. how to do it. Yep. Um, you know, other book creating tools, uh, Story Jumper is another one. It's definitely um, that one's for your lower group because they have a lot of already pre-designed um characters and backgrounds and things that are easily to be able to pull in. Um, storyboard, that is another one that has so many different options. My students loved using Storyboard, that, especially in history, because it had all the like, historical backgrounds, historical characters, the ability to customize it um, is really great. If you're planning to do like a shoot a film or a movie we talked about before, you want them to do a quick storyboard before they shoot that film, this is a good place to create that. And then you can also do presentations inside of Storyboard, that. So it's one that's, you know, that it's, it has multiple uses like some of these other ones. So, hmm. and then Flip Snack, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Flip Snack. No. It's another creation no, one um, that, you know, the I liked it for newspapers because it had like the big newspaper and then the whole page would turn and flip. Um, so it kind of gives that little extra, uh, uh, but it has other presentation features inside of Flip Snack as well. So. Oh. That's one I'll look yep, at. Yep. Um, and then the other, um, you know, student creation project is posters, flyers, and the websites. You know, I kind of throw those all in together because you're putting out information um, in these. And, you know, with any of these projects to always give the choice of physical. You're like, I know we're, you know, we're technology people. We love meaningful integration and technology, but it is perfectly okay for them if they want to create a book by hand, go for it. I had a lot of students that when we had our, you know, a book project, they would sometimes use book creator, sometimes they'd create a physical book. And that's perfectly okay. So for any of these, physical works just as well as anything else. So, um, but when they're creating, like if you wanted to use that technology piece for posters, flyers, and websites, what things are we seeing out there? Well, I love Adobe Express. Yep, another one, yep, here it, it comes again. Like yep. we talked about <laughs> for creating the um, videos or whatever you wanna, you know, the books, you can also create flyers and infographics. And the good thing is, if you need a little help getting started, they have all these templates you could use as well. So I like that. Sure. And they integrate so well with so many of the other tools that kids could bring in. And you can start simple with, you know, the tools like Google Drawings and, you know, having students create their own Google Sites. Um, you know, that stuff is all right there in yep. our Google Suite. So yep. it's really easy to get started with. Most kids have experience with using those tools. Yep. So something that you can start small and then build up to some of the more advanced features that we have sure and then a, another version of google drawing is called sketchpad sketchpad has a lot of it's a very similar to google drawings it has some extra features in there it has some stickers and characters and things that you can put inside it um to kind of make that flyer kind of be a little or poster or whatever it is that you're going to do pop a little bit more um yeah but using google sites for websites is something that you know when you, letting a kid kind of think about how they can create a website and what has to be in it and really see that creation that creativity come out inside of that um you know is, is a really you know great thing to to see so now we move into some like kind of like 3d creation things um you like know my wheelhouse yeah now, <laughs> yeah. now Jeremy's um, excited. yeah so um you know one thing they can use and it's in, also in our class link is sketchup mm -hmm. um you're you're probably gonna have to bring one of us in to help you with sketchup aka phil sheridan to, bring, <laughs> <laughs> to help you with sketchup yeah. um you know we're, we're all trying to learn from him as do it but um you know we're, I'm going to be doing SketchUp with a school and they're going to be creating little tiny houses and they're going to be doing like a open face kind of tiny house with the rooms, the walls and kind of, you know, using SketchUp to create that. What other kind of 3D creation tools are out there? Yeah, Tinkercad is great. Uh, yep. We use Tinkercad all the time for 3D design, 3D printing. It's a really simple tool. You can use it from, you know, the, the youngest students all the way up through we're doing high school projects right now uh, with students creating things. Um, it's a it's a simple tool to use, simple tool to get started with. Teachers can create classes so they can see everything that their kids are working on, which is a really nice feature. I like that they can work on some of the projects together as well. If they sure. share the link. Yep. Um, so they're collaborating or helping each other out, fixing things or editing. And you can use that for 3D printing, laser mm -hmm. cutting. You know, what else would they want to use for, you know, 3D printing or laser cutting? What other options would be out there? So you can you can use SketchUp for sure both of those um, you can create 
3D and SketchUp or 2D. Um, you can find things. There's lots of tools where you can go find things and then adjust those features that you want. Um, we use something just simple as Google Drawings for mm -hmm. laser cutting. Uh, you know, students create in Google Drawings and then we're able to download those and take those and put them into the, the software with our lasers and cut out whatever we want. Sure. And what's nice about that is you kind of get that instant creation to laser cutter, which is super fast, whereas in 3D printing, a little bit more time consuming and, and not you kind of see that instant kind of, uh, uh, yeah, from what you right. created. So, um, and then another thing that students also can use is Minecraft, you know, um, you know, whether they create it at home, um, but, you know, letting students, you know, explore that world, create different um, worlds. I had students that were showing me the Columbia Exchange and they had this Minecraft thing going across the boat. And yeah, I don't know what the Minecraft thing is, but as, you know, and they would drop off things at one continent and then they took the boat over to another one. And then I've had but, students use Lusitania and actually blow it up showing causes of World War One. So just that creation and, and giving them something that they're really excited and have fun doing. So. And it, it takes a lot. Oops. Um, <laughs> because we see the the finished product and right. like, oh, that's great. But everything that yeah. takes building it sure. and all the creative thinking um that's going on to to know that they have to get this piece or this boat to right. make it over here and what obstacles they have in the way. Yeah. So and then they were able to collaborate inside of the Minecraft world right. and, and they were, you know, basically presenting as they're, you know, recording whatever they're doing inside of it. So it's another really great student creation piece. So. Yeah. One of the great things about all of these creation things is the kids take these things home and they want to keep working on right. it at home. Um, you know, you get that question all the time. Can I, can I do this at home? Can I keep working on it? Yeah, can absolutely. I build something else? Uh, and most of this stuff is web-based, so you can take it and they can continue to work on it, yep. show and share things with parents at home and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, kind of what I think student creation and projects do is that, you know, instead of kids having to do work at home, they want to do work at home. And that's, you know, I had kids that would make a, a music video and you, they'd be shooting places throughout around their neighborhood or around the city right. or whatever. And it's like, so I didn't ask them to do that, um, but that's what they wanted to do. Yeah, so they're learning outside the four walls of the right, classroom. Not, and not because they have to, because they want to. Right. So. And that's another, you know, important piece when it comes to student project creation. And so the last project we were going to talk about today, obviously, there's a lot more. Uh, if we forgot any ideas or any tools, definitely sh reach out, share yeah, them with us. We'd love to hear what about what using. it is. Absolutely. Um, but we want, you know, talk about podcasts, you know, um, podcasts or another, you know, where here we are, you know, doing one, but students can do them as well. Um, and again, back to Google, they can use Google Slides and create them um, and insert online voice recorder. And it's, you know, it's an online web-based voice recorder. They can put their, um, I call them micro podcasts, you know, because it's like a little four minute, you know, uh, especially when you're talking about a student presentation, you don't want to sit through a half hour or 20 minutes, but, you know, a little micro podcast, five minutes, talk about whatever, insert that into a visual. And that's a nice little student creation project that they really get interested in. Um, and they could use Screencastify like yep, we they use, use Screencastify for, for podcasts as well. We had some students at Boulder Bluff on Friday. They um, came out to the truck and then they got to share their learning and talk about, you know, what they did on a podcast. And boy, some of them just oh, took they off with love it. I was yes. really shocked. I thought they'd be shy and timid. They are not shy and timid. Right. A lot of these kids, they, you talk podcasts, they, that's, I mean, they are, they're all about it. And that's what's even, you know, it's what's great about student creation projects. So. Yeah, it's really popular forum for kids to be able to get things out for anybody to get things out there right. uh, we we've got some podcasters out at jk gordine right now doing some podcasting some third grade students um so it you know it can reach everywhere and anywhere and you yep. can share what you're doing in your classrooms or around the school with you know the rest of the world it is definitely a way DFV to do that we did that last year they had it was maybe two minutes and what a great way as a parent because i would go in and listen to those even though i didn't have a student there i thought it was great what a great way as a parent to really know what the class sure. was working on throughout the week. And it was led by students. Sure. And so if you're looking to share those out in the world, uh, Podcastle is another place that you can create podcasts and and share them. Uh, ways to share them out to the world is through Anchor. And again, that's something that be teacher created. YouTube channel also you teacher created, maintain, but it's a way for you to share what's kind of going on inside of your classroom with the community. And that's another way. And then you also find when you're doing these student creation projects, when you kind of add that little extra piece that this is going to be shown to more than just 
just me or you know shown to that little you're going to see that even that, that that creativity and that collaboration and that critical thinking is going to even ramp up a little bit more as well yeah they always feel like wait oh it's not just you watching it or yeah, listening sure. and i'm going to make it better yep and they go all out and that's when really you know tremendous learning takes place and that's what this is all about so well, that's all the student project creations we got. Like I said, if there's anything out there that you, that we missed, please, please reach out, send us an email. We'd love to hear about what you did. Uh, check out the show notes again that are in the description. We also have a link to the Squadcast PD that allows for you to get an hour of credit for every two podcasts that you listen to. There's a quick Google form to fill out and you get an hour of podcasts. And we Say really- it isn't so. <laughs> I can get PD credit just by listening to these fabulous podcasts. Yeah. Wow. Easy as that. So we really appreciate everybody out there watching and listening. Bye. Bye.